Thank you. Um, first of all, it's a great pleasure to be back in Lisbon. Um, I think the last time I was here was like 20 years ago. Um, and I have a, yeah. Um, uh, so, um, I had planned to give a blackboard talk, but um, the talk didn't really fit, and I had some slides that were half an hour, and so I thought I would use those. Um, the problem is they're mainly in French, though, so I'll explain what it is. I hope that's not too much of a, a problem. I translated the first page. Uh, I didn't have time to translate the rest of it. Um, let me just explain the basic picture on the board first. So, um, uh, if you have a system of linear ordinary differential equations, it's possible to choose a small disk and look at the space of s s solutions there. And this is a, a finite dimensional vector to space. Um, and it's possible to look at all of the different disks and, and axiomatize the, 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 um, the objects which occur when you have a look at all of these families of vector spaces of, of solutions. And this is a, a local system of vector spaces, a locally constant sheaf. Um, so it's p possible to prove that the category of, of connections with regular singularities is equivalent to the category of local systems of finite dimensional vector to spaces. Um, so you have something like connections um, with first order poles of rank n. Um, and if you look at these up to isomorphism, then it's possible to describe these explicitly in terms of a topological object, the local system of solutions. If you choose a base point, you can describe that explicitly in terms of the space of representations of the fundamental group. And so this is in natural bijective correspondence with a quite explicit space, the space of um, representations of the fundamental group of the underlying curve, or you know, an open subset of the complex plane, if you like, into um, GL, let's just say G is GLNC, um, so the space of representations up to conjugation. So here I'm looking at things of rank N. Um, so, you know, pe pe people know what is the definition of the fundamental group, and so I can just write down it's the, you know, the space of tame or regular singular connections um, is parameterized by this space of conjugacy classes of representations of the fundamental group. I have a, a purely topological description of some class of, of algebraic connections. Um, so this you know, basically starts with, you know, Riemann's paper, um, in 1857, where he looked at the, the monodromy of the Gauss hypergeometric functions. Um, but here, I guess, we're more interested in the, um, the picture that occurs when you don't put in this t tame condition. So this goes back to, I guess, Stokes, 1857. Um, and in particular, it's extension by Birkhoff um, around 1909 and 1913. Um, so we would like to describe the category of all of the connections. Um, but if you do that, it's too big. So you need to fix something in particular which includes fixing the rank. Um, so let's call the thing to be fixed the irregular class. Um, so basically, at each of the punches, you have a a collection of exponential factors, so you want to fix the exponential factors and their multiplicities, and that's what we call the irregular class. So in the tame picture, we fix the irregular class to be equal to zero with multiplicity n. So here we're fixing the you know, arbitrary choices of exponential factors and their multiplicities. And then we look at the connections with those fixed classes, and we look at those up to isomorphism um, and again, this can be described explicitly in terms of the Stokes data, which has various different descriptions. Um, in particular, there's one, the space of Stokes representations of a certain fundamental groupoid, um, which looks like the one that we had before, and you're still quotienting by some complex reductive group, which here I'll call H, the group of framings. Um, so the well-known picture at the top has a very clean and clear extension. It's just that this picture is not as well-known as the picture at the top, partly because there's various different ways to describe what the Stokes data is. 
Um, but there is one particular way which is actually quite close to Stokes' original perspective, where it does become the space of, of representations of some groupoid, the fundamental groupoid of a curve if you add these extra tangential punctures. Um, and you look at the representations which obey particular conditions, the Stokes conditions. Um, so the motivation for this is that these have natural Poisson stru structures. Um, the, the, these are algebraic Poisson varieties. Um, and this is also the symplectic leaves at the top are got by fixing the, the conjugacy class of the monogamy around each of the punches. And at the bottom, you have this, this formal local system which classifies the um, connections formally. Um, it, this is a graded local system on a small punctured disk around each of the poles, and you're fixing the isomorphism class of that, which is a particular um, twisted conjugacy class of a block diagonal subgroup of GLN. But it is you know, a direct extension of the picture that we had before, um, so we can look at you know, the symplectic leaves, which are you know, nice algebraic symplectic varieties. Um, so the motivation is that we want to understand the isomonogamy in the panel of A equations. Originally, we started out having a linear ordinary differential equation, and we looked at a small disk, and we looked at the vector space of solutions on the disk. Now we take a panel of A or an isomonogamy equ equation, we look at the meromorphic solutions of that on a small disk, and we get some non-linear space. Um, uh, um, there's a non the linear space of solutions, um, and that space is analytically isomorphic to one of these spaces which occurs here. The, the fibers of the isomonogamy systems are isomorphic to these, so these are often called character varieties, um, and these are called wild character varieties. Um, so it's possible to, to understand the topological properties, the global properties of all of the isomonogamy equations um, in terms of the local systems which are formed having fibers, the symplectic leaves of these wild character spaces. So we, you know, that's the reason that we want to understand these spaces extremely clearly. Um, so today I want to talk about the, the multiplicative symplectic quotient construction of these. So I'll start out by t t t talking about the tame picture and then explain how it's possible to extend it to the wild picture also. Um, and to understand that, I want to quickly re review the standard story about you know, symplectic quotients in the usual picture um, that I guess people here would know in order to see that we are actually looking at the multiplicative version of that. Um, so um, I'll start out with this symplectic and Hamiltonian geometry at the start and then talk about the tame picture and then talk about the wild or irregular or sauvage picture um, at the end. Um, so this is probably extremely f f familiar to the people here. So I want to talk, talk about, you know, what is a symplectic manifold? So it's a, a space which has a two-form, and in particular, if I have a two-form, there's this map from the tangent bundle to the cotangent bundle that takes a, um, you, you know, it's an isomorphism between vector fields and one forms. Um, so if I have a function, we can look at the Hamiltonian vector field of the function, um, we take the exterior derivative and then we look at the corresponding vector field. Um, and in particular, the Poisson bracket on the functions um, matches up with the Lie bracket of vector fields. Um, okay, so we can, this is all probably very standard for people here. Um, the basic examples might be the, the, the cotangent bundle of a space has a natural symplectic structure. Um, and you might also talk about the co-adjoint orbits um, so I have the dual of the, the algebra, and I look at the, the orbits there. Um, so for instance, for GLN, the, or, the co-adjoint orbits and the adjoint orbits are isomorphic, so we're just looking at conjugacy classes of matrices. So each of the, these orbits has a, a natural symplectic structure, um, and it's possible to write it down explicitly in this way if I... Um, the tangents to the orbits will be things of this form, and you can write down what is the symplectic form evaluated on two such tangent vectors explicitly. 
Um, this is all the standard story. Um, and then there's various operations to construct new symplectic spaces out of old ones. For instance, you can look at the product. Um, and then there's the, the symplectic reduction or Marsden-Weinstein reduction. Um, so you start off with a, a space with an action of a group and you ask for a moment map, which is a map from the space to the dual of the algebra. Um, so it's a way to put together some Hamiltonian functions that generate the action. Um, so the component of the moment map h of x gives the Hamiltonian vector field for the action of, of x in the, in the Lie algebra on the space. Um, and then the symplectic quotient is got by looking at, at mu inverse of zero quotiented by g. So in particular, um, even if the group g is of odd d dimension, the symplectic quotient will again be symplectic, and so in particular of even dimension. Um, so it's a standard way to look at you know, reduced phase spaces. Okay, so it's possible to construct a large packet of uh, um, class of, of symplectic spaces out of these simple examples, and most of the spaces which are carrying classical, um, classical mechanics appear in this way. Um, so for example, I could take an m-tuple of co-adjoint orbits and then look at the diagonal symplectic quotient by um, the group G, so the moment map for the co-adjoint action of G on an orbit is just the inclusion of the orbit in the dual of the algebra. Um, here I'm looking at the diagonal action, so the moment map for that would be the sum. Um, so we're just looking at an m-tuple of matrices in fixed orbits whose sum is equal to zero, and then I'm quotienting by the group. So the fact you're looking at this sub-variety where the sum is equal to, to zero, you know, reduces the dimension by the same amount as when you quotient by the group. So, so you're actually ending up with something which is of even dimension. Um, so the basic point is that there's lots of other you know, symplectic spaces which occur, um, which don't fit directly into the framework that we had just now. In particular, if you look at these tame character varieties. Um, so there exists lots of other examples such is this. Um, so if you have a compact surface and look at the space of representations of the fundamental group into some Lie group G um, with an invariant in the product, so let's just assume G is GLN or reductive. Um, so this can be viewed just as the space of, of flat connections of rank N if I take G to be GLN. Um, so it's the isomorphism of classes of these. Um, and Atiyah and Bott in 1982 explained sort of that this has a natural symplectic structure because it's the symplectic reduction of some infinite dimensional sort of affine space of connections. If I look at all of the connections on a fixed rank n vector bundle, um, this is some infinite di dimensional symplectic affine space and then look at the action of the gauge group. Um, so if the bundle is trivial, it's just the space of maps from the, the surface into our constant group G. Uh, that acts by gauge transformations. And the magical fact is that the, the curvature is a moment map for this action of the gauge group. And so the symplectic quotient mu inverse of zero is the space of flat, flat connections up to gauge, um, which is the, the space here, which has this purely top logical description is the space of representations of the fundamental group. Um, so when I was a graduate student in Oxford, like all of the talks were about some version of these spaces, you know, quantizations and cohomology classes. Um, so the basic point of the talk is to point out that there's a vast number of spaces with the same properties, which are got by um, thinking about this slightly differently in t terms of algebraic connections which are tame and then passing from the tame picture to the case of irregular poles. Um, um, if you look at the case with punctures, the space of representation of the fundamental group has a Poisson structure and the symplectic leaves are got by fixing the conjugacy classes of monodromy around each of the punctures. So the symplectic leaves are this, where you fix 
um, a conjugacy cl class in the group for each pole, and you put in the condition on the representations that that class has to be fixed, and that corresponds to fixing the isomorphism class of the connection to a small punctured disk. Um, so these are the tame character varieties. Um, okay, but it, of course it's possible to ch choose a, a, a presentation of the fundamental group and describe explicitly what the space is. It's, um, you know, so I choose my A and B cycles and let big A and big B be the monogamy around those, and then it has this explicit pr presentation of the product of the big MIs with the product of the multiplicative commutators um, of the A's and the B's. Um, uh, okay, this is for surfaces of G genus G with M punctures. Uh, so similar presentations occur in, in Poincaré's paper in 1884. Um, and if you look at Andre Weil's paper from 1938, he has this expression, the product of the multiplicative commutators. Um, he was more interested in the case of compact groups like UN, and we're having a look at the complexification of that, such as GLNC. Um, this is also very popular in work of Narasimhan and Seshadri. Um, here's the product of the multiplicative commutators again. Um, and in Atiyah's book on the geometry and physics of knots, he has this chapter on non-abelian moduli spaces, and again, he's talking about these Narasimhan and Chaudhry spaces, the product of the commutators is equal to one. So you're having a look at the map from G to the 2G to, to G, given by the product of commutators, and you're looking at the inverse of one, and then you quotient by G to get the moduli space that you're interested in. So of course, this looks like a multiplicative version of the symplectic reduction that we had before, rather than the um, looking at mu inverse of zero for a map into the dual of the, the Lie algebra, we have a map that takes the values in the group and we look at mu inverse of one quotiented by G. So the basic question is, you know, can one set up a multiplicative version of symplectic geometry such that this is a multiplicative symplectic quotient? Um, and various people looked at this and it crystallized in this work of Alexei of Malkin and Mein Renkin in 1990 who says, set up this theory. Um, so one can do that, and the basic e examples of quasi-Hamiltonian spaces, or you know, spaces with group values moment maps, are the conjugacy classes in the group, with the moment map being the inclusions. So these are like multiplicative versions of the co-joint orbits. Um, and the internally fused double, um, which is just G cross G, um, with the moment map given by this multiplicative commutator that we saw before. So one sets up this theory with a multiplicative version of the symplectic structure um, and pro proves that these are quasi-Hamiltonian spaces, and then you need to have analogues of the um, product and re reduction. So they do that too. Um, the product of spaces, um, so if I have um, M1 and M2, quasi-Hamiltonian G spaces, their product is again a quasi-Hamiltonian um, G space. Um, so the basic examples are got by looking at the space of flat connections on a surface with one boundary component and fixing a base point near the boundary and then the moment map is the monogamy around the boundary. Um, so in particular, if I take the one-hole torus and cho choose a particular presentation of the fundamental group of that, I will get this space um, with the moment map being the multiplicative commutator. Um, so if I have an arbitrary pair of surfaces with one boundary, the product here co corresponds to this usual f fusion picture. Um, and so, so the moment map on M, the surface got after fusion, is the product of the moment maps that we had before, but now it depends on the order. In the additive case, it was abelian. Here it depends on a particular order, and so that's the reason that you draw these pictures and end up with braiding. Um, and then there's the reduction, which corresponds to capping off. Um, so if I glue on the boundary, I then end up with a quasi-Hamiltonian space for the trivial group, and that is by definition a symplectic space. 
So it's possible to construct lots of examples of symplectic spaces as quasi-Hamiltonian reductions of you know, the, these spaces with these multiplicative moment maps upstairs. So in particular, if I take the fusion of M conjugacy classes and G of these internally fused du doubles, I get this tame character variety that we had before. And this is the, you know, it's the complexification of the basic construction of Alexei, of Malkin, and mein um, um so one can specialize this to genus zero, and then you don't have the multiplicative commutators. You've just got these products being equal to one. And this you know, really does look like the multiplicative version of that. And um, it's possible to identify the space at the bottom as a moduli space of Fuchsian systems or logarithmic connections on the trivial vector bundle. Um, so a point here gives the residues of a connection if you fix particular pole positions in the complex plane, the small AIs. And then there's this map that takes the monodromy of such a connection and gives you a representation of the fundamental group at the top. And you choose a certain presentation of that to get these explicit monodromy matrices MI. Um, it's easy to prove it's a holomorphic map. And Hitchin proved that it was symplectic in the early 90s. Um, and the two spaces have the same dimension. Um, OK, so this paper of Alex of Malkin and Mumbain Rankin came out in the middle of my the thesis. And I was reading Dubrovin's papers about Stokes' the, the data. And it became clear that there's lots of other interesting moduli spaces beyond the ones that the um, gauge theory experts have been having a look at. So the natural question was to try to extend this picture um, to the irregular case as well. Um, so I learned this from this paper of Jimbo, Mira, and Ueno in 1981. Um, but the idea is in a paper of Burkhoff from 1913, as they say. Uh, so the point is, if you have an irregular, an irregular connection, then the monodromy relation that we had before um, is generalized and becomes much more co complicated. So basically, each of the MIs is a product of um, a connection matrix, the formal monogamy HI, and some product of Stokes matrices as well. Um, so a certain product of specific triangular matrices. Um, so Burkhoff looked at the case where um, each of the Stokes groups is, is one dimensional. Um, an equivalent perspective was used by Jimbo Miranueno, where you get these full triangular groups. Um, so a basic question is, you know, is it possible to put you know, symplectic structures on the moduli spaces which occur, the, the moduli spaces of irregular connections are on curves? So it's possible to extend this a tier bot perspective to give an a analytic construction of the symplectic stru structures there. Um, and then after that, it was possible to extend this, this um, uh, TQFT type picture. Um, I'll explain the precise statement in a moment. Um, and we did this for all reductive groups and not just GLN. Um, so the recent work since this has been more that, so there was some paper of Witten in 2008 um, that it turned out that the physics people were, were interested in these symplectic structures which are appearing here. Um, so this is just working with generic connections. So ones whose most po polar term has distinct eigenvalues. Um, so of course, there's lots of connections which don't have that property. So in a sequence of papers, 2009, 2014, and it ended in this very general paper with Daisuke Yamakawa in 2015, um, we extended this story from the generic case that Burkhoff and Jimbo and Miwa Inueno had looked at to the case of general connections. So we end up with statements that work with the whole of the category of algebraic connections on curves, um, and not just the ones which are generic. Um, so in particular, the formal monogamy may not be diagonal, but is in generally in a block di diagonal group or a permuted block diagonal group um, in the twisted case. Um, OK, so the basic questions that people have is, you know, where do these presentations come from and what is the motivation? I think I'll probably explain the motivation. Um, let me just give you know, a precise statement in an example. So 
we're replacing the local pieces by this more general piece. Um, basically, we're copying it out of Birkhoff or Jimbo Mirunueno. So we have the group G with the connection matrix, T with the formal monogamy, and then some space of Stokes data, which in the generic picture is just a product of, of full triangular groups. So for instance, in the case of GL2, it would look something like this. And the statement is that the, 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 this is a... Um, this has a multiplicative moment map for the group G cross T, um, and you can write down the G moment map like this and the H one explicitly like that, um, so H is in T. Uh, so once you have that, you can then fuse together to get the symplectic stru structures on arbitrary um, curves. Uh, so the basic question is, how do we think of this sort of more geometrically? So in the case of the multiplicative commutator, it was clearly something about the monogamy of a connection on a, a one-hole torus. Um, so I think the right topological picture to express what Stokes would actually be doing was that in a neighborhood of the pole, there's this reduction of structure group. Um, so in the generic cases, it's a reduction to a torus. The, the connections formally are classified by a graded local system. Um, so the monogamy around you know, a small punctured disk around the pole, which in this picture is at infinity, is in the torus. And then what the Stokes data does is gives a way to glue this graded local system into the local system of solutions of the connection on the rest of the curve. So it glues the graded bit into this G local system as in the tame picture at the start. The niggle is that there are these singular directions where things jump and these are the jumps that were detected by Stokes. Um, and we can you know, sort of axiomatize exactly how the monogamy around these tangential punctures is, is restricted. It has to be in the Stokes groups. Um, and that gives an axiomatization of the cl class of connections which occur for each particular um, cho choice of um, the class, the, the, the exponential factors. Um, Okay, um, so the connection, may, you know, I'd have a, a base point on each of the boundaries and the connection matrix goes between the, those in the SI, the Stokes matrices, which are the monogamy around these tangential punctures. Um, and the formal monogamy is the monogamy around this small punctured disk around the pole. Um, so the basic picture is that you're reducing the structure group from G to a maximal torus in this generic picture. So one can picture it slightly differently. For instance, if you were looking at GL2, um, so here I've got GL2 and here I've got the maximal torus C star cross C star of GL2. Um, so a GL2 local system is the same as having two local systems for the group C star. So the picture is that your surface is actually bifurcating into these two pieces. So you know, the irregular pole gives a natural way to break the structure group from G to this torus. The, the surface is um, breaking up. So in the twisted picture, for instance, like for panel of A1, you get these pictures where it breaks up, but it's twisted, and so you still only get you know, one, ba ba one boundary circle. Um, but you know, that's what's actually happening being in the, um, the Stokes picture. Um, OK, so once we have this, we can look at re reduction. So for, for, for instance, if you um, do the multiplicative symplectic quotient by G, that corresponds to capping off the end over here. So we get this disk um, with the broken structure group on the boundary. Um, and one can write down explicitly what these spaces look like in this GL2 picture. Um, the moment map condition becomes the fact that the, that a particular Euler continuance has to be non has to be non-zero. Um, so this goes back to Euler's paper. So in effect, he um, well he was looking at continued fractions, but the um, basic point is that the expressions which he has are expressions for the moment map which occurs. Um, so these spaces B have this explicit description. So it's, it's an open part of C to the N where this Euler continuum is not 
zero. And then the moment map for the action of t, the computation of the formal monogamy around the boundary after you've reduced the structure group is given explicitly by the Euler continuance. So the AIs are like the, the active off di diagonal entries of these Stokes matrices, the SIs. And so we understand what these Euler continuants are as group value moment maps. Um, OK. Um, so now I wasn't sure how much to talk about what the Stokes data is, because I think there's lots of experts here who know perfectly well what the Stokes data is. I mean, if you, um, if you look in Stokes' paper, you get a picture like this. So he looked at the airy e equation, and he um, drew this picture to express the, the change in dominance of the exponential factor e to the, um, so for airy, you get something like, um, you know, e or x of uh, x to the 3 over 2. Um, so there are particular directions in which the branches you know, switch um, order of growth. And th this is the picture which he drew. Um, so this is the picture you would get if you look at Be Be Bessel's equation, which is perhaps simpler. Um, so that would just have th things like, I guess, e to the ix and e to the minus ix, or perhaps e to the x and e to the, minus, uh, e to the ix. Uh, um, so this is Aries. So the basic picture is that you would have you know, a preferred sub-dominant solution on each of the sectors between these change of orders. Um, and if you look at the sub-dominant solution here and here, this would give a preferred basis of solutions in the sector between, say, A and C. And it's these bases which give the, the gradings, and then the, the Stokes the data is the, the change of bases between the bases in these sectors. Um, so it's possible to actually emphasize that, that to, to describe the category of connections in general. But I don't really have time to discuss this in great detail here. Um, so this is the, the Stokes diagram of the Weber equation, or the, the, I think the parabolic s cylinder. Um, and then this is the one you would get from the Lax pair for Panave 1, which is like the picture on the title page of the talk. Um, so one can draw it in this, you know, the fission picture where it's actually bre breaking up like that. Um, and there's lots of other examples, for instance, one can draw pictures that look like, you know, atoms as well. Um, there's lots of examples which occur. Um, so the class that we need to fix um, corresponds to choosing the exponential factors. So um, maybe I should make that precise that you um, want to define precisely what is an exponential factor. So if I have a coordinate, it's basically something that looks like this. Um, but it's possible to define it also in a coordinate independent perspective and then work on an arbitrary curve. Um, so each function like this gives a circle which may have a particular cover. For instance, if I take r to be minimal, um, it's a, a cover of the circle of the directions of degree r. Um, so the class corresponds to choosing a finite number of circles, and each of which has a multiplicity, um, which is the dimension of the graded piece which occurs. Um, and so we can be completely pre 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 precise about the, the, um, uh, the choices which have to be made. Um, and the tame picture is just the case where you take q to be equal to 0 with multiplicity n equal to the rank of the bundles. Um, so the isomonogamy story occurs. Um, so the wisdom is that you want to treat the choice of the irregular class exactly like the moduli of the curve. Um, so people are very happy to deform the complex structure on the curve and the positions of the poles. And they talk about MGM, the moduli space of curves with M marked po points. And then the tame character spaces form a local system of varieties over MGM. 
Um, the irregular version of that is that you want to also vary the irregular class, which is just a generalization of what Jimbo, Miwa, and Ueno actually did. Um, so the natural perspective is to put th these into a, a package and define an irregular curve or a wild surface to be a triple. Um, so it's a complex curve plus the mark points, and at each of those, choose an irregular class. And then we look at the admissible deformations of that, and the statement is that the wild character spaces um, form a local system of varieties over the admissible deformations of these irregular curves. And that's, that's the topological description of what all the isomenogamy equations are. Um, so we can describe you know, the monogamy um, the non-linear monogamy just as explicitly as in the tame picture that people did by looking at the you know, dragging around the fundamental group. Um, okay, so, so the basic picture is I have an irregular curve and a cho cho choice of the classes, I get this symplectic space um, and we picture it in t terms of the pi which is here is the fundamental groupoid of this curve. I choose one base point on each of the boundaries um, and you look at the fundamental groupoid after having taken out these tangential punctures, and then the space of connections is a certain class of representations of this fundamental groupoid into the group, and you need to put in the condition that the monogamy around the extra punctures has to be in the corresponding Stokes group, and the condition that it's graded around the boundaries. So, so for instance, the monogamy might be in a maximal torus array twisted version of that in the twisted picture, like in the picture here, that the two factors of the torus are switched over as you do well, one loop. But that's uh, now completely explicit, and we get the, these explicit symplectic structures from this quasi Hamiltonian picture. Um, OK, so let me just summarize the story which I sketched on the board at the start, and perhaps just now, that the tame picture I have a local system. So here you start with a family of curves with mark points and you replace each of the curves by the tame character space and this gives a family of character varieties and the point is it has a natural flat Erisman connection on this non-dinear non bundle. Um, so it's a local system of, of, of varieties. Um, and one can prove that it's symplectic. And so in particular, if you integrate this, if I choose a base point and look at the monogamy around loops in the base, this gives an action um, of the fundamental group of the base, the mapping class group, and the, the braid, um, the braid, braid um, the mapping class group and the braid groups on the fibers. Um, so it's just the monogamy of this connection, which is the top logical picture of what the isomenogamy equations are in the tame picture, but now we understand how to extend it to general connections. Um, so we do the same thing, but we now look at the space of admissible deformations of a curve with marked points and with an irregular class, so we can deform the cues. Um, and again, we get a local system of wild character varieties over the base. And the monogamy of this will give a generalization of the mapping class group, the wild mapping class group, if you like. Um, so any loop in the base gives a, you know, an algebraic symplectic automorphism of the, the, the fiber. Um, so you know, the first examples of this were the, the monogamy of Frobenius structures in de Brobin's paper in 1994. Also, so the aim was to extend the particular isomenogamy story he looks at having, you know, a connection having one pole of order two to the case of arbitrary order poles and arbitrary curves. Um, so we, we now understand how that works. Um, and there's also an aspect of it putting on hyperkähler metrics also that um, perhaps I just mentioned that. Um, so we've been looking at the character of propriety and that's corresponds to the base of connections. Um, these have natural hyperkähler metrics on them and in their other complex structure, these are space of Higgs bundles. So lots of integrable systems have this um, 
this extra structure, um, that they have this different complex structure in which they're, you know, so it's if I'm deforming h bar from 0 to 1 to pass from a Higgs bundle, which can be described in terms of spectral curves, to a modular space of connections. But most of the integrable systems which actually occur in the physics or in integrable systems are more, you know, the base curve is gene zero with poles, and so one wanted to extend this picture to that case. Um, that can be done, and this part of it was looked at by Sabat in 1999, and the metric part of it was looked at in this paper with Bicard. Um, so in particular, we can extend to put hyper the metrics. So for instance, on the moduli spaces which occur in the pan story, where the moduli spaces are complex dimension two. Um, so for instance, Flaschke and Newell looked at pan two and the monodromy surface which occurred there looks like this. And so that's an example, you know, the explicit description of the variety underlying a complete hyperkähler manifold um, from this work with Bicard. Uh, and then there's a story about how to try to classify the spaces in terms of graphs. So each of the spaces can be parameterized in terms of graphs, and there's a class of graphs that occur which parameterize these non-abelian Hodge spaces for which well, one has this story. Um, I'll stop there. I, I think I'm out of time. Mm. Mm. What is the role? The role. Um, so, I mean, people often want to look at the autonomous limit of an isomonotomy system, and that is often an integrable system. For instance, if you look at the elliptic asymptotics of Panlevé 1, um, you're passing from an isomonotomy system to a, a, a autonomous integrable system. The elliptic curves which occur there are the fibers of a Hitchin system, or a meromorphic Hitchin. Um, so it gives a precise way the, that you know, your complex space, which is your modulized space of connections, is canonically diffeomorphic to the total space of the integrable system which occurs. Um, it's just a natural property that modulized spaces of meromorphic connections on curves have. Um, I don't know if that really answers the question, but that's you know, part of it is to try to you know, better understand this business about when h bar goes to zero. Um, but I mean, from our perspective, it's like you know, Hitchin knew how to do the hyper k geometrics in the case of a compact curve, and it was a natural question. Um, there was this work of Donaghy and Markman and Cyberg and Witten that basically the Integrable systems which occurred in the cyborg witten story were meromorphic Hitchin systems. And so it was natural to try to extend lots of the techniques for you know, vanilla Hitchin systems to the case with poles, which were the ones of interest in, for instance, cyborg witten um, I don't think the physicists knew all of the metrics, even in the case of complex dimension two, that they'd looked at like Panavay three and maybe five and six, but they hadn't looked at the ones corresponding like Panway one, two, and four. Um, but yeah, now we have this general construction. There are um, other constructions. There's this work of Gayoso Moore and Knightsky, which have a conjectural, you know, clutching map description of the twister spaces of metrics which look to be the same metrics as here, but that's not proved. And there's a, another construction which only works in complex dimension two of um, Hein. Um, he was a student of T T Tian, and he has a, a quite precise description of the asymptotics also of how to construct metrics on the same spaces. Um, the you know, the Panlevé spaces, the ones of co complex dimension two, and it's expected that his metrics are the same as the metrics from this general picture, but again, that's not been proved. Um, okay. Right. And it's I mean, very useful to do this now. But for, for higher rate equations or whatever, is there any way to take that? Um 
So am I allowed to replace asymptotic values by you know, the Stokes filtration? So like the, you know, the subdominant solution as a, you know, a subspace of my local system of solutions. Um, so we do understand the relation between Stokes filtrations and these Stokes gradings or you know, wild monogamy representations. I have a paper on the archive from March which explains that in you know, the GLM picture in general. Um, but I'm not quite clear if you know, Stokes filtrations are the same as asymptotic but, 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 yeah. Are they? <laughs> maybe, maybe. What is an asymptotic value? Yeah. Uh, so, for the scalar equation, you take uh, the ratio of two solutions. Right. It has a, a well defined limit inside any Stokes set. And, and this is defined up to the actual CGM of Right. So you can substitute that. Uh, the data from the stock just like the asymptotic data. Right, so, so in, of all these, uh, in general, there would be a projective mapping. space, and you're mapping to a projective space rather than the ratio. Yeah. Um, I think that could be done, perhaps we'll discuss afterwards that, that, um, to make it clear. Um, so, the basic question about how to pass between Stokes filtrations and the Stokes gradings on while technology is now clear, at least for GLN. Um, and I imagine that's close to that, but we can discuss. Mm -hmm. um, right, so I have this paper on the archive from 2002, 0203, which gives you, it's called Quasi-Hamiltonian Geometry of Meromorphic Connections. It was published in Duke in 2000. And seven. So that does the generic picture. And then there's this sequence of pa papers. There's a paper I wrote for Malgrange in, for Malgrange's conference in 2009, which does the case where you know, the formal monogamy is not necessarily abelian, that it has these bl blocks. And then there was the case, there's this Annals of Math pa paper, which does the general untwisted picture. And then the final step was this work with Jan which on the archive in December 2015, which does the general twisted pi picture. So there's ve various steps, but now we can do an arbitrary connection. Even the twisted picture where you know, you're, you're, it's a G bundle for a, a group G, which is not, not constant. It's a, it's a t torsor for a reductive group scheme or something. But, um, yeah, so I think we should now be able to describe, you know, sort of, part of the aim was to try to work out, you know, what are the you know, what is the class of hyperkähler spaces of solutions to Hitchens equations which occur from curves? Um, I'm hoping that we capture all of the ones which occur in this picture. That, that, um, people have looked at what happens in higher dimensions, but there's no examples, that no one knows an example of a hyperkähler space that comes from representations of the fundamental group of a higher, di 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 a higher di dimensional space which isn't isomorphic to a a moduli space which occurs for a curve. And I think that statement holds also in the wild case as well. There could be l large class of examples, but nobody has been able to construct one. Uh, it's easy to choose a generic curve in the space such that the map is an isomorphism, the restriction is an isomorphism on components. So by looking at the irregular picture, we get this vast number of new spaces, whereas people have been you know, struggling to, you know, working hard to prove things in higher d dimensions, but th there are no known examples yet. Um, um, okay. Okay, if there are no further questions, let's have the speaker again. Mm -hmm.